Hello, everybody. I'm Ron Siphon, and I will be coming at, uh, at this whole discussion from a different perspective than I haven't been here for the whole uh, thing ever since yesterday. I was working yesterday, but uh, what I heard at the last session, I, I'm not even sure why I'm on this panel of, of illustrious speakers. Uh, I am the vice president of the Cobb County Civic Coalition. Cobb County is a county here in the Atlanta region. And um, I'm, I'm basically a neighborhood representative. Uh, I am uh, president of the Vinings Homeowners Association. I'm a past president of the Cobb County Civic Coalition. And we have been dealing with some of the issues that have been discussed uh, uh, here today, smart growth, inclusionary zoning, development issues, zoning issues. That's the primary focus of the, of the Cobb County Civic Coalition. But as opposed to um, looking at how smart growth and urban growth boundaries and issues like that have been implemented on the West Coast or Australia, I'm just looking at the Atlanta region and specifically Cobb County. And in this region, um, we, we don't have any urban growth boundaries. And so Atlanta is kind of a, one of the poster children for sprawl because we don't have that. Um, I'm sorry. So anyway, uh, so the criticism of this area is that we have rapid growth and we're sprawling uh, uncontrollably. Well, uh, we're certainly growing and we certainly cover a, a broad area. Let me put Atlanta into a little bit of a perspective first of all. 40 years ago, 40 years ago, this was a city that had just reached 1 million in population for the greater Atlanta region. The greater Atlanta region now exceeds 4 million in population in just 40 years. Well, most of that has come from, not from, from procreation, it's come from people moving into this region because people thought this was a really good place to live for whatever reason. We've got a good economy, but people like living here. Um, one, if you go back into the, into the 60s and 70s and, and well into the 80s and look at why, what was happening, why were so many people moving here? Um, I, I used to live uh, near uh, some people who worked for, uh, I had multiple neighbors who worked for IBM. They said IBM stands for I've been moved. Every 18 months you would get a transfer to someplace else. But what happened when people moved here is they would find a suburban neighborhood that they really liked. And you got a lot more for your money in this region um, than, than most other cities in the country. And there were a lot of people who liked the suburban neighborhoods in this region and said, I'm not taking the next transfer, I'm staying here. Some people quit and found other jobs just to stay here. People turned down raises to stay in this region um, and promotions to stay here. Now, people who don't like low density suburban neighborhoods, they took that next transfer and they left and got out of town. But what that leaves us in the, in the Atlanta region, not necessarily in the city limits of Atlanta, I'm talking about the suburbs, and particularly the northern suburbs, because that's where almost all of the transplants, when they came here, that's where they moved. So if you look at Atlanta's northern suburbs, where that's been where 90% of the growth has occurred, it's now populated by people who They've chosen to live in, in a low-density suburban community, a, a, a neighborhood consisting of low-density single-family detached homes. Now, since we don't have the, the growth boundaries uh, and, and certain of the other issues that some of the other speakers have, have discussed that have 
uh, distorted housing prices in other communities. As, as has been pointed out, Atlanta is, is a city where we're still relatively affordable compared to many other places in the country. Um, now certainly you can find cities that are not growing at all, rust belt cities in certain places that I'm sure that the housing is technically more affordable, but nobody wants to move there. But as far as places that are growing, that people want to move there, this is still one of the most affordable uh, cities in the country. And so that's an important thing to understand um, as far as understanding Atlanta and, and this region, that's a very important aspect of understanding uh, this region. Cobb County Civic Coalition for the last few years has been dealing with smart growth type issues, whether it's um, inclusionary zoning, smart growth concepts, affordable housing, um, they're, they're all interrelated. And we are concerned with the, the efforts to bring those types of policies to this region. Um, what we're seeing, a, a smart growth is apparently been being promoted in different places in different ways. In this region, it's really being promoted as a, w as a way to justify promoting higher density as broadly as possible throughout the region and to bring higher density and mixed use to those portions of, of suburban, the uh, suburban Atlanta region that are really characterized as suburban, low density, single family homes, but we do have uh, neighborhood activity centers all throughout the area, so in most cases, people live a, a fairly, uh, a, in a fair, fairly close proximity to a reasonable amount of shopping, but not close to an urban area. And most people who live in the Atlanta suburbs don't want to live in an urban area. Um, as far as uh, the Atlanta region is concerned, um, most people who live here really like the type of neighborhood that they live in in the, in the northern suburbs. Um, those types of neighborhoods are only sustainable through zoning regulation. You've got zoning regulations in place that say this is the type of, this is the type of, of development, residential development at these densities that are allowed here. So uh, while some places have gone to extremes with regulation that have caused distortions in the market, we would not want to go to the opposite extreme of no regulation and have asphalt plants being built next to suburban neighborhoods. Uh, so we would certainly want to maintain a balance of regulation uh, as we go into the future. Affordable housing is certainly an issue for many cities um, for different reasons. Um, one of the reasons that the Atlanta region um, is beginning to have a shortage of affordable housing is that in many places, local uh, governments are approving uh, the redevelopment of nice existing neighborhoods that are affordable because developers can buy out those neighborhoods and redevelop it at much higher densities, much more expensive housing. The developer makes money, there's a market for that housing, but if local jurisdictions want to be serious about addressing the issue Stop approving tearing it down. Um, if you've got a blighted area where you need redevelopment, that's great. Redevelop that area. But where we, where we are tearing down large, nice homes in nice neighborhoods, and we're tearing them down, left and right. 
I don't know if that's happening everywhere, but it's certainly happening way too much here. I, I, I happen to think that affordable housing is a reasonable objective. And it's a reasonable objective even when we're talking about new construction. But one of the things that the Cobb County Civic Coalition has been promoting is let's have, let's have land use policies and planning so that we can identify those areas that are not near uh, interstate highways and other infrastructure that can support high density housing. And those areas are, are already characterized by sub low density suburban communities Let's protect those communities. But where we have places, especially very close to interstate highway access, other major uh, activity centers, um, and specifically in places where it will not imp adversely impact an existing neighborhood, because some, some of those locations need to be excluded because there are low density single family neighborhoods there. But there are a lot of places that you could identify that if you're willing to do the planning, you could plan for corridors where you can, you can plan for very high density future development, high density and mixed use near interstate highways. That would be an appropriate place for the, that type of development. Once you're planning for that in an appropriate location, What's the difference between saying, okay, we're going to have 20 units per acre here versus we'll let you have 30 units per acre if you'll include some affordable housing and we'll just give you, we'll give you more density than we would have otherwise given you. We see no problem with that. At the same time, we're not suggesting that this should be a matter of subsidized housing where you've, you're building a, a home that's worth $300,000 and you're required to sell it for $100,000. What we're suggesting within this concept is build, if you're building a home that's gonna be priced at $100,000, you're building a $100,000 home, but you're getting an extra. The code would, might only give you 20 units per acre. We're gonna give you an extra 10 units per acre and you can make those affordable, you can, you can make them smaller, you can, whatever it, it takes to get the price of that, and we're just giving you extra homes than you would have gotten anyway. So you've already bought the land, the land is the land cost, you might have gotten 20 units per acre, we're just giving you some extra so you can build some affordable housing in addition. Now that's an idea that's not, not a subsidy, it's just an extra, it's an incentive to add some affordable housing in an appropriate location, that's an idea that we think would work for affordable housing without going the subsidy route. Um, so um, anyway, I, I'm gonna stop at this point. If I know, I'm, I think we're going through all the presentations. I'll be available for any questions or comments if you have any.